So what happened yesterday? Good morning. Happy Wednesday. Hope you're doing well. Uh, today, I woke up early. Well, early for me, 5.45 a.m. I'm not sure if that's early for you. Uh, because I had a consulting call with a team in Sweden with uh, Elijah and all his folks. And it went well. I think I was able to help them out. We're going to do another call in two weeks. Now I'm trying to decide if I'm going to go up and go snowboarding because we got a ton of snow last night and it's looking pretty good and it's still pretty early. I could catch maybe not first chair, but second or third chair. The thing I like about snowboarding is when your board is on the ground and you're moving, you're really not thinking about anything else except kind of what's in front of you. But when you're on the chairlift, you have all of this uninterrupted time to think, to just think. And that's a real luxury in our culture. And so I'm on the chairlift, enjoying the scenery, but my brain is going. And one of the things I was thinking about was the ski resort had sent all season pass holders a special email that there was going to be a bunch of snow that day. And I thought, that's so funny. Why do they care if a season's pass holder shows up at the mountain on a snow day? In fact, maybe why wouldn't they want to keep those people at home and just advertise to people that might buy a day ticket? After all, they already have our money. And that led to a series of revelations that I ended up tweeting about product market fit, product validation, and why you really want people to use your product. Let me get into it. So the big reason a ski resort wants me to show up on a powder day, even if they already have my money for my season's pass, is that to succeed long term, a product or a business needs usage and satisfaction from your customers. Getting someone to pay for your product is not validation. If I don't use my ski pass or if I use it and I don't enjoy it, if the snow's not good or I only get notifications on bad snow days, it's likely I won't renew next year. So they might get my money this year, but over the long term, they're going to lose out on a lot of revenue. And I've noticed this in software teams. A lot of times they'll celebrate after they've received the customer's first payment. We got their money. We must have product market fit. We've made it. Well, not so fast. Let's see if they pay next year after their annual review. When you're building a product, you want it to be so valuable that when they come to the end of their year and they're reviewing all of their purchases, they look at your item on their income statement and they go, you know what? That was so worth it. That gave us so much value. That helped us so much. We can't live without that product. We're definitely renewing. But I'm sure you've been in the situation where you're reviewing your expenses, maybe monthly or yearly, and you're like, ah, I never used this thing. I'm going to cancel. In a subscription business, you need to be so valuable that your customers will stick with you year after year. And there are certain categories that lend themselves more to this than others. For example, most businesses need web hosting. And so WP Engine has made a very profitable business out of doing that. Most businesses need email marketing. And so MailChimp and ConvertKit and Drip have made a very good business out of that. And most businesses will need some sort of accounting and invoicing software. Well, that's why FreshBooks is one of the more popular SaaS products out there. 
We're really focused on net promoter score in the software industry. I'm sure you've seen these surveys emailed to you. They look like this. How likely are you to recommend this product or service to a friend or colleague? But maybe instead of net promoter score, we need to be thinking more about net renewer score. How likely is it that our users will renew their subscription? Are they satisfied with the service they're getting? How much are they using the product? And I had a funny thought related to this. I logged in the other day to sendcheckit.com. Uh, specifically, they have a tool called Email Subject Line Tester. And it's something I use every day. And it was down. It's the first time this has ever happened, but it was down. And I messaged the founder. Uh, I know him. And uh, he got it back up. But then my thought was, forget net promoter score. If you really want to know how valuable your app is, put it offline for 15 minutes and see how many messages you get. If people are using your product, if they find it valuable, if it has become part of their life, if they can't imagine their life without it, then you'll know right away. Your app goes down and they will message you. They will find a way to tell you that it's broken. But if nobody messages you when your app goes down, that might be a sign that they're not using it as much as maybe they should. And there's a risk that they might cancel. If your app goes down and it's not worth complaining about, maybe your product isn't worth paying for. Uh, of course, there's edge cases, you know, certain apps only get used infrequently. But I think the, the exercise is still helpful. I had one more thought about why the ski resort would want me to go to the hill on a powder day. And it comes down to marketing. If I'm on the hill and I'm having a great time, what do I do? I post pictures like this on Instagram and videos like this on Snapchat and check-ins like this on Facebook. I tell the world about my good experience. And really, you want both of these things at the same time and one leads to the other. You want a product that is so valuable that people can't live without it, that they're willing to pay for it year after year after year. And that will naturally lead to the second thing, which is a product that people talk about, a product that spreads virally, a product that is shared with word of mouth. So if you're struggling with either of these things, if you're struggling with a product that's churning a lot of users, or you're struggling to find good channels, good marketing channels for your product, you might not have built something that is compelling enough that makes people use it and want to keep paying for it and use it and want to tell the world about it.